I had just put away my journal before realizing I completely forgot to write about Wendy. We were going to do another quest today though, so I'm writing this in the bathroom after completing it. Don't ask. It was bad pumpkin soup. I don't know how it tasted like mouse droppings. It was so good just the day before. Anyway, due to the pauses and breaks between writing, this might be a shorter entry. Which is annoying because Wendy deserves a whole book written about her. I must admit, I was a little surprised when I saw that an old lady would be coming with us on our entry quest to get into the Messenger of the Stag. I asked her what brought her out to join the group, but she answered only that she needed something to do and this was as good as anything else. Is she in retirement? Or maybe she might be looking for someone, like a grandkid or otherwise. Whatever her reasoning for joining the group of monster hunters, I'm glad she's around. I'll admit, I was a little protective of her when we went out on our first quest. I didn't know if she was a little confused or had a little bit of a death wish going out with us to go slay some monsters. I didn't want anything to hurt her. However, I didn't need to worry. She's another spellcaster like Koyu and Danielle. I can tell that she gets her power from something other than nature as well, but hers feels much different than Danielle's. It's a little similar to Koyu's, but not quite. At one point, she turned into a beautiful lady during the fight that seemed otherworldly. I have no idea how, but for some reason, it scared the heck out of me. It felt unnatural seeing her like that when I was so used to seeing her as, well, herself. But Wendy endured me to her from the moment we met, it seems. She's funny and friendly. When we met at the building where the messengers of the stag stay, I didn't realize that she was cracking jokes and, um, uh, I might have tried to pick her up and carry her down the stairs when she complained that her knees were aching. It's a little embarrassing I couldn't pick her up at all, but she didn't make fun of me for it. She awkwardly pat my arm and thanked me for helping her, which made me feel a little bit better. She doesn't want us to call her anything like grandma or granny like I've heard other children call their elders in the town that I sometimes visited while I was back home. She just likes Wendy, but I can't help but feel like she's a little bit of a grandmother to me. That sounds creepy, but it's not. I hope it's not. I never knew my grandmother, or grandfather, or human family at all. Well, I can't remember if I knew them or not. So when she gave me her lucky doll to hang on to while we traveled to our first questing town, I don't know, it just felt nice. She's always nice. I feel like she's not afraid of me, and never was. Maybe feeling like she's my granny is a bit too weird, but I don't know. We're close. So you can imagine my terror when during the night with the Lucrata, she fell. I used a spell I don't like to use very often, called Wither and Bloom. It's a nasty spell that steals the life force of another creature and gives it to another. I might have overreacted, but seeing Wendy face down on the ground, it it triggered me. I wanted those things dead for hurting my new friend. I hadn't really felt like that in a long time. It still scares me a little thinking about Wendy fainting and my reaction afterward. At least that reaction was my own this time and not someone else's. I've seen too many die. No one I love is going to fall like that again. That's why I gotta get stronger. No one else is going to die because I wasn't able to help them. Though, 
I already managed to fail again today with Calypso fainting while we fought that ooze monster. Next time, I'll try to pull her out instead of trying to get the monster to let go of her. Wendy is okay now, as is Calypso, thankfully. <sighs> I'm still awake. It's so late and I want to go to bed, but man. I guess I'll just keep riding till the pumpkin soup finally stops. Today, Danielle and Wendy had a little disagreement? I don't know. There was a ring, reading minds, and then Wendy kept talking. She likes to talk. And then Danielle stormed off. It was hard knowing what to say. I don't know how to handle girls fighting. I barely followed what happened. Regardless, Wendy seems pretty upset after it, as did Danielle. But Calypso went to go talk to her. I figured I could have dinner with Wendy and- Oh! Shoot! I gotta apologize to her tomorrow. 